Hey folks, this is Colin Richards, and I am excited to be talking to you today about solutions for the next 10-year stock market returns. If you checked out our recent segment, you learned that Vanguard and others are predicting a pretty mediocre return on your investment in stocks over the next 10 years. And yes, they've actually done a pretty good job of dialing this in in the past, and so we have every reason to believe that their estimates, though they appear conservative, are actually realistic. Now, I, of course, would love to see stock returns soar and everybody benefit. But in the meantime, what are we going to do? Are we going to ignore the advice, stick our head in the sand, hope it works out for the best? Some of my clients, I asked them, you know, were you back in 2008 negatively impacted by the big uh, market downturn that we had back then? And they said, well, yeah, I suppose on paper. Well, the reality is the value of your wealth is always recorded on paper and you have to recover on paper as well. And so the question I often ask is, do you think some people actually prospered, got ahead during 08, 09? The answer is always, well, yes, of course. Well, let me ask you this. Was it the people who prepared in advance or the people who just let that 2008, 2009 market come their way? I would submit to you that it is those who prepare in advance who have a plan in place that are going to prosper regardless of how well markets do going forward. Because you see, there are ways to take advantage of any movement in the market, good or bad, and get that onto your balance sheet. So first of all, step number one, you need to build a written plan. You know it, Lord and Richards, if you've listened to me for any amount of time, it is the plans that get written down. It is the goals that get written down that have the highest likelihood of being achieved. It is the goals that are just floating around in our heads that never really materialize. As someone has wisely said, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. So let's get it written down. It doesn't mean a little scratch piece of paper. A written comprehensive financial plan will bake in these long-term lower growth projections and mathematically test them relentlessly hundreds and hundreds of times making sure that no matter what happens in the days ahead, you're okay, your family's okay, and your goals, dreams, and values are realized. And you know what? We need to add other things into the picture that we test, like high unforeseen expenses. 70% of my audience, 70%, this is a devastating statistic, are likely to be confronted with the high cost of chronic illness. And this is the number one cause of bankruptcy in retirement. Typically, it's caring for a spouse, and then the well spouse is bankrupted by the cost of that care. Wow. And what about taxes? Where do you see taxes going? <laughs> Where do you see them going? Are we in a high bracket now or a low? Well, the data tells us we're in a low bracket, and it's time to be planning and moving money around to ensure that you take the fullest advantage of today's low brackets. I'm not talking about just converting everything you got all at once. It's about a logical, thought-out plan to gradually move money from forever taxed to never again taxed. That's a tax reduction plan, and it needs to be written down. It needs to be tested and formulated. And then, step number two, after we've got a written plan, now we need to consider other ways to invest. Consider alternative strategies. You see, if you'll study some of the largest pools of money out there, hospital endowments, college endowments, some of the largest companies in the world, pensions, they invest differently than the average person. They're not listening to the radio to decide whether to buy gold or stock up on oil. What they're doing is what we call institutional risk management. Institutional risk management means the way institutions mitigate risk. You see Harvard or the Children's Hospital right here in Denver, uh, these organizations have large endowments that they don't want to see fluctuate wildly over time. Think about the challenge. If you and I are planning for your retirement, how long do we need that money to last? Well, just your lifetime, right? If you're planning for Harvard's endowment and their, uh, their life expectancy, well, that's eternity is what they're hoping. <laughs> Nothing lasts forever, but they're planning on it. And when you do your research... When you do, do your research at places like commonfund.org, you'll discover that between 25 and 40 percent of private and uh, pl public endowments, foundations, are, in, are alternative investments, up to 40 percent, up to 40. Well, what are they doing, Colin? Well, some of those may be risky plays, right? They're investing some, some opportunities, but there's also some risk management going on there. 
you know, back in 1987, Chase Manhattan developed the first market indexed CD, a certificate of disappointment, safe, principal protected with low yields. But Chase Manhattan figured out how to take those low guaranteed interest rates and aggressively invest them alternatively to create much higher opportunity, all while protecting principal. Folks, if you're not doing this in your portfolio right now, this is the number one strategy today. Number one strategy is principal protected index. If it's not going on, or if you don't have enough of it, you're going to be disappointed the next time the market declines. What we want to do is teach you to have growth, opportunity, as well as principal protection at the same time. Usually we put money in cash or something for principal protection, put money in stocks for growth, and it's always at risk. But the, the principal protected money is never growing. Let's combine those. Let's get the same dollar growing and protected at the same time. You say, I've never heard of that. Well, then we probably need to visit. And then for those assets that are at risk, right, the part of our portfolio that, that maybe we need more liquid out there so that we can move money around more easily, we need to get some hedging involved with that. And at Lord & Richards, we have um, developed a plan whereby we can get you uh, hedging at a low cost in a mere mortal's portfolio without having to be a billionaire or an endowment. Folks, these are all strategies that we're using every single day to help people like you offset these expected poor returns from our market. And we can help you today. It really begins with a simple phone call and a delightful conversation.